Hey, what's up guys? Hard Leg Joe here with your weekly What A Dick Profile. This week we're looking at Raid Raptor Dynamite. For a monster lineup, we have all Raid Raptors, including three Tribute Lanius, three Vanishing Lanius, three Mimicry Lanius, three Fuzzy Lanius, three Booster Strix, three Pain Lanius, and three Last Strix. For spells, we have three Allure of Darkness, three Rank Up Magic Skip Force, one Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Launch, three Called by the Grave, and three Raid Raptor Nest. Our only traps are three copies of Icarus Attack and three copies of Raptor's Gust. Our extra deck consists of one number 77, one Final Fortress Falcon, two Ultimate Falcon, one Satellite Cannon Falcon, one Revolution Falcon, one Stranger Falcon, one Blaze Falcon, one Iced Beast Xerophane, two Force Strix, one Borolode, one Decode, one Akashic Magician, and one Underclock Taker. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So first of all, I just want to start by mentioning that like nearly all my decks, this one is designed to be TCG legal, so that everyone who plays in real life can go out right now if they want to and play this deck. Uh, that's why awesome cards like uh, Arsenal Falcon and Air Raid and Pint Size Priest are in the side deck. If you're playing online or if these come out, you'll want to put them in, but for now they're not available, so we're just going to keep them there. So with that disclaimer out of the way, this is a dynamite deck, which is a term I use for a deck that has the potential to make really strong plays, but needs a few turns to set up first. Uh, in this case, our really strong play is making Final Fortress Falcon, so rank 12 monster with 3800 attack, 2800 defense, and while it has a Raid Raptor Ixie material, it is unaffected by other cards' effects. In addition, up to twice per turn when this attacking monster destroys a monster by battle, you can banish one Raid Raptor Ixie from your graveyard and attack again. Also once per turn, you can detach to return all of your banished Raid Raptors back to the graveyard. If it wasn't already obvious, this thing is a behemoth. Since it's unaffected by all card effects, your opponent either has to tribute over it with a kaiju-like effect or attack over it, and many decks can't do either, which means summoning this thing is, is effectively your win condition. Now, to summon this thing is actually just a simple two-card combo. First, you'll need Lastrix. Uh, this monster has two effects. First, if a Raid Raptor you control battles, you can special summon it from your hand and gain 100 life points for every spell trap on your field or in your graveyard. Uh, this is situationally useful. Mostly, you're just going to be using it for its second effect, which is you contribute this card to special summon one Raid Raptor Ixie from your extra deck, but its effects are negated, it's returned to the extra deck during the end phase, and your opponent takes no battle damage that turn. So you'll use this effect to summon Ultimate Falcon from out of your extra deck, and then play the other part of your combo, which is Rank Up Magic Skip Force. This is a spell that lets you target a Raid Raptor Ixie you control, and summon a Raid Raptor on top of it that is two ranks higher which will turn your negated Ultimate Falcon into a very playable Final Fortress Falcon. Now, while this is a really simple two-card combo, it's hindered by the fact that there isn't really a worthwhile way to search your Skip Force. Instead, you'll have to hard draw it, which is where the dynamite portion of the deck comes into play. You're going to be stalling until you can get to this. Fortunately, Raid Raptors are supremely good at deck thinning. Almost all their main deck monsters help with that in some way. Tribute Lanius says during the main phase of the turn it's normal or special summoned, you can send one Raid Raptor card from your deck to the graveyard. You're almost always going to send Mimicry Lanius, which during the main phase, if it's in the graveyard because it was sent there that turn, you can banish it to add one Raid Raptor card from your deck to your hand. Uh, this is one of the few Raid Raptors that can search spell traps, so you almost always want to go for Raid Raptor Nest which is a continuous spell card that says if you control two or more Raid Raptors, you can add one Raid Raptor monster from your deck or your graveyard to your hand, but you can only use the effect of a nest once per turn. Getting two Raid Raptors on the field is really easy with most of our other monsters. Vanishing Lanius, for example, says once per turn during the main phase, if this card was normal or special summon this turn, you could special summon one level four lower Raid Raptor from your hand. Fuzzy Lanius, meanwhile, says if you control a Raid Raptor other than Fuzzy Lanius, you can special summon it from the hand. Uh, also, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add another copy of itself from the deck to the hand. But both of these effects are hard once per turns, and if you use either of them, you can't summon for the rest of the turn, except for Raid Raptors. Keep that in mind. Finally, there's Pain Lanius. If it's in your hand, you can target a Raid Raptor you control, 
take damage equal to either its attack or its defense, whichever is lower, and then special summon this card, and its level becomes the current level of the monster you targeted. Uh, you can only use this once per turn, and also you can only Ixie summon with it if you make a winged beast. These three will not only help you to get a second monster on board so that you can get your search with Nest, but they'll also allow you to easily make your rank 4 Ixie Force Strix, which can detach to add any level 4 Dark Wing Beast from your deck to your hand, which includes all your level 4 Raid Raptors. Uh, not only that, but this thing gains 500 attack and defense for every other Winged Beast monster you control, which can allow it to easily get up to 3,000 or more defense, which helps with the stall. It makes a little bit of a wall. So putting all that together, just a standard Raid Raptor play, Normal Summon Vanishing Lanius, use its effect to Special Summon Tribute Lanius, send Mimicry to the Graveyard, banish it to get Nest, use Nest to search Fuzzy, Special Summon Fuzzy, use it and Vanishing Lanius in order to make four Strix, which will get you another search with its effect, and if you detach Fuzzy, then you'll add another copy of itself to your hand as well. Of course, depending on your hand, you may want to do that slightly differently, search out different things. You can use Pain Lanius in, in place of Vanishing by, like, normal summoning this. Uh, e either way, hopefully you get the idea. Raid Raptors allow you to establish a couple monsters on board while maintaining hand advantage and removing five cards from your deck, which will make it much more likely that you'll see your rank up magic in the next turn, especially when you combine with draw power like Allure of Darkness. Of course, ending on a couple defense position monsters will hardly stall for long, which is where the stun part of the deck comes into play. There are some Raid Raptor cards we're not playing that'll, that, that act almost like a Wabaku for Raid Raptors. They'll prevent your stuff from being destroyed. I prefer things that are a little bit proactive. We've got Raptor's Gust, which is a counter trap that lets you negate and destroy any spell trap as long as you control a Raid Raptor. And Icarus Attack, which lets you tribute any winged beast to target two cards on the field and destroy them. We're also playing Called by the Grave, which is a little generic support card that allows you to banish a monster in your opponent's graveyard and negate not only its effects, but the activated effects of every monster with that same original name. And finally, our last remaining Raid Raptor, Booster Strix, which is a hand trap that says when one of your Raid Raptor monsters is targeted for an attack, you can banish this from your hand to destroy the attacking monster. These four cards allow you a variety of disruption to stop your opponent in their tracks, which will hopefully let you stall through your opponent's turn at worst, and at best actually leave them open for attacks. Uh, despite my best attempts to make this focus on summoning the big Ixie monsters, I oftentimes find that if I get enough disruption on board, I can actually just uh, st like stop their turn entirely, and then swarm with all the regular Raid Raptor monsters and attack for massive damage that way. Uh, four Strix may only have a hundred base attack, but with five other Raid Raptors, it goes up to 2,600, which can hurt quite a bit on an open field, especially if you've got a couple Tribute Lanius Laniuses backing it up. Speaking of which, Tribute Lanius has another effect that I rarely use, but it's worth bringing up. During the main phase two, if it destroyed a monster by battle, you can add one quick play rank up magic spell from your deck to your hand, but you can't summon anything for the rest of the turn except for Raid Raptors. Uh, this is why we play the one Phantom Knight's Rank Up card, because you can search it with Tribute Lanius. Uh, its effect allows you to target a Dark Ixie with no material, and Special Summon a Dark Ixie, which is one rank higher on top of it. Uh, this is how we get into our Rank 5s for the most part, just by using that on a Force Strix that's already used its material. Uh, Mimicry Lanius actually has a second effect as well that lets you increase the levels of all Raid Raptor monsters on the field by one, so you could use that to get into your rank 5s. Uh, most of the time, you're going to send all these to the graveyard, though, and never actually draw them. So it rarely gets used. Uh, regardless, though, speaking of the extra deck, we've got quite a few interesting cards you can toolbox. Uh, I won't read them entirely, but briefly, we've got Ice Beast Xerophane. It's not a Raid Raptor, but it can only be made with Winged Beasts, and it is a Winged Beast, so there's some synergy there. And it has the pretty amazing effect that it can detach to negate the effects of all face-up cards on the field until your next standby phase. Blaze Falcon can attack directly for a thousand, and it can detach to destroy all of your opponent's special summoned monsters and inflict 500 damage to them for each. Uh, Stranger Falcon can detach to target a monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and inflict damage equal to its original attack. It also has a floating effect. Revolution Falcon, it's a rank 6, 
This can be made by using Skip Force on your Force Strix. It can detach to attack all your opponent's monsters in one battle phase, and it reduces every special summoned monster's attack to zero when it battles them. Satellite Cannon Falcon is a rank 8. Uh, you can make this with the same combo as Final Fortress Falcon. If you use Last Strix to summon Revolution Falcon, and then Skip Force it up, when it's summoned, it destroys all spell traps your opponent controls, and they can't respond to that. It can also detach to reduce an opponent's monster by 800 attack for every Raid Raptor in the grave. Usually, though, if you're going to summon this thing, it's going to be because you need to get rid of all the spell traps they have. Mainly, this is just here, though, if you want to summon Ultimate Falcon. Um, you can summon this off of Last Strix, just like every other Ixie, and then rank it up into Ultimate Falcon. Which is, which is also unaffected by all things, just like Fortress Falcon. It has slightly less attack, but during the end phase of each turn, if it has Ixie material, you can make your opponent's monsters lose a thousand attack, or if they have no monsters, inflict a thousand damage to them. Uh, honestly, in retrospect, this might be better than Final Fortress Falcon, uh, but this card is new, so I kind of wanted to focus on trying to get that out. Um, but you, you probably don't even need to play this. You could maybe just focus on Ultimate Falcon and have an extra spot. Uh, our last Ixian here is Seven Sins, which is a 4,000 beater. It can detach to prevent itself from being destroyed, so it has a little bit of protection. And it can be Ixi summoned on top of any rank 10 or 11 dark Ixi monster without using rank up magic. Uh, this is really a card that used to be amazing, but has become less useful these days, because most decks can get rid of it without destroying it with some sort of target banishment or sending to the hand. Uh, but if you have Last Strix and no rank up magic, you can use this to summon uh, Ultimate Falcon, summon this on top of it, and then just hopefully stall more with a 4000 body. Finally, we're just playing some generic Link Monsters which we're only really using to get four Strix out of the extra monster zone. If you happen to get your, your two-card combo and this is already there, you can summon a monster or a couple of monsters, make one of these links, and then you have room to get your final Fortress Falcon. Really, you can just fill this with whatever Link monsters you want, any generic ones that you think will work. Just keep in mind that you can't summon any Link monsters the same turn that you use either of Fuzzy's effects, because this will lock you into just Raid Raptors. Everything else can be used as Link material just fine. That just leaves us with the side deck, which is mostly more options. I already talked about these cards that aren't out yet, that you could play these. Uh, if you're playing online, or if you're if they come out eventually. Uh, if you want to take out the, the Phantom Knight's rank up magic, you can easily put another Four Strix, another Ultimate Falcon, as well as Castell, who's also a winged beast, so there's a little bit of synergy there. Um, there's also rank up magic Soul Shave Force, which is a popular choice that I don't really like, just because it requires a bit of setup and it has a pretty steep cost. But if you like to live dangerously and make crazy plays, it can, it can do some pretty cool stuff. Its effect is to pay half your life points, target a Raid Raptor Ixie in the graveyard, summon it, and then summon an Ixie that's two ranks higher on top of it from your extra deck. This card makes it really easy to summon out Revolution Falcon because you can easily use it on a Force Strix. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you summon a monster with your last Strix, it's not considered properly summoned. So if, if even if this goes into the graveyard, you can't use it on this and then get, get your final Fortress Falcon. It has to be summoned correctly to begin with. Uh, the neat thing about it, though, is that because it doesn't specifically say you have to summon a Raid Raptor, you can use it on your Four Strix to make any rank 6, including personal favorites like Utopia Beyond and Photon Strike Bouncer, as well as the fan favorite Cyber Dragon Infinity. So a lot of different options with that. It's just you have to pay half your life points, you have to summon the monster correctly, and that you have to have something in the graveyard, otherwise it's useless. Finally, I was going to suggest Escape from a Dark Dimension for more slower games. If you really get into a grind, a lot of your stuff can end up banished, and this can summon it back. Uh, especially with three allures of darkness, there's some synergy there. But after playing the episode, I'd actually recommend switching these out for Twin Twisters, or maybe just a suite of board wipes, dark holes, Raigekis, Torrential Tributes, whichever you think works best. But anyway, that's the deck. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see the Raid Raptor Dynamite in action, you can check out the main video linked in the description or on the end card. There I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro, showing off what this thing does. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun. <laughs> <laughs>